Good evening, and welcome to the Young People's Theatre presentation of the Water Gun Song, Idris Goodwin. Normally, for a YPT production, we'd all be in the same space together, but we all know why that is not possible. Still, with this digital format, it is possible for you to join us from wherever you are, from different neighbourhoods, from different cities, different countries. So, wherever you are, welcome to this digital space. I want to start by acknowledging that although we are all indigenous to the planet Earth, I imagine that whatever land or territory you are on right now, there were people, nations living there long before you. I'm in Toronto and I am on land and waterways that have known human activity for more than 15,000 years. I live and work on the territory of the Dish with One Spoon Covenant between the Anishinaabe Nation and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy of Six Nations. Their government holds that everything that the land and water provides for the people is held in one dish, and there is one spoon to take from that dish. And it is everyone's responsibility to take only what they need and to always ensure that there is something left in the dish for those who follow. I am grateful to live on land that holds such wisdom. Toronto is also traditional territory for the Wendat Nation, for other nations recorded and unrecorded. Recently, it is the territory of 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit, who are part of the Anabe Nation. Miigwech, Niawe, thank you to the original caretakers of this land and to, to the indigenous people who are still here showing us how to care for the the land, the plants, the animals, and the water that we are so dependent upon. Tonight's play is one of five plays by Idris Goodwin that he made freely available to producers like YPT for the critical time we are in. So I want to thank you, Idris, for generosity. You give us artful ways to dive into the challenging conversations and the urgent call to action that are necessary to achieve genuine equality and justice for Black, Indigenous, and other people of colour. And these conversations, these calls to action, of course, must include young people. And so Young People Theatre is proud to present Kevin and Miles Hanshard, directed by Natasha Mumba in The Water Gun Song. Are you listening? Uh huh. You just press this button and it takes off like just by pressing a button. Cindy has the best stories. <laughs> that is great, Sam. <laughs> yes, so, so awesome. So awesome. And that's not all. That's not all. No? They have a dog and a cat and an iguana. Can you believe that? And an iguana. <laughs> yep, yep, his name is Ivan. Ivan Iguana. And guess what the cat's name is? Yeah, that, that's that's real nice. Are you listening? I am. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I asked if you could get the cat's name, and you said, yeah, that's real nice. Oh, look, hey, let me tell you, could you? Look, I am listening. Right? See? I'm going to put my phone down. The cat's name. Guess. Uh, what's the cat's name? Try and guess. Um, furball? No. <laughs> uh, well? Obama. Really? Yep. <laughs> that, that is so cute. <laughs> yeah, because he's half black and half white. I'm sorry, what? Some of the cats were in black and some is white. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, I get it. It's so much fun at Cindy's house. Mm hmm how, how are Cindy's parents towards you? What do you mean? Well, how do they how do they treat you? 
What do you mean? Are they nice to you? Of course they're nice to me. Do they ever say things to, to make you uncomfortable? No. Cindy's my friend. Because you can tell me if they do. Matter of fact, I need you to tell me if they do. It's okay. Just have fun. Hey, hey, you know what else? What else? We had a huge water fight. <laughs> oh, yeah? It was so cool. Cindy's mom filled this bucket with water balloons and buckets. And you know what else? What else? Uh. What else? Oh, nothing. Well, now, now you got me all curious. Tell me. Nothing. Was it water guns? Was it water guns, Sam? Hey, it's okay. I'm not mad. You're not? No. I understand. You're having fun. It was so much fun. And that's okay when you're at someone else's house. That's fine. It was so much fun. Cindy has this one that shoots water so far. Yeah? So far. But Cindy knows that when she comes here, we don't do that, right? I told you that. Oh, yeah? Yep. I told her and your mom and your dad. Well, what, what did they say? They didn't say anything. Nothing? Nope. Just did like this. Well, well, what did you say? I said we can't play water guns at my house. Did you say why? No. Well... Sam, can you have to say why? I don't know why. Sam, come on. You, of course you know why. I don't know why. Sam, come on. We, we talked about this. But I don't understand. A water gun is plastic and it's colorful. And it's just water and it's not for real. Yeah, but it's a gun. For water. There are guns that light up and make noise. Guns that are like space alien guns. Do you remember when it was our, our day to bring snacks to our whole class? See, we made sure to find something that everybody could eat, right? Yes. Why did we do that? Because some kids couldn't have dairy or gluten. Right, we did that to be considerate of other people's allergies. So you know what happens when, when people's allergies act up? They don't feel good? Right, they don't feel good. They get sick. Well, guns make me feel a little sick. Even if it's a toy gun. If it has a barrel and a trigger, I have a reaction. What kind? You know, you know how some nights you have bad dreams? Yes. I have them sometimes. In the daytime. Even when I'm awake and, and when I think of you. With guns, even toy guns, I have quick, little bad dreams in my head. What kind? See, something happens when toys are in the hands of, of children. With children like you. What happens to them? Sometimes grown-ups can't tell the difference between something being a toy and, and something being real, even if you're playing. Not everybody's in on the game. Oh. I have an idea. <laughs> What's your idea? To let everyone know we're just playing. We can sing a song. What kind of song? The water gun song. <laughs> well, how does the water, song, water gun song go? Water gun, water gun. It's so fun, it's so fun. Sing it with me, sing it with me. Walk to gun, walk to gun. gun. It's, it's so fun. So fun. It's, it's so fun. fun. <laughs> it's a game, it's not real.
pretend it's not real. It's, it's just, just a game. game. It's, it's not, not real. real. It's just it's pretend. pretend. It's, it's not, not real. real. <laughs> what about that? Maybe that would help. Maybe. Either way, I like it. When you get the bad dreams, you can sing that song. Okay. Oh, you know what else? Hey, um, you know that Obama, the, the, the person, not the cat, you know that he's more than just his colors, right? Of course. Okay. Just making sure. How about nunchucks? Can I have nunchucks in the house? Yeah, we'll talk about it. Hey, you know what else? <laughs> Thank you very much. That was a fantastic show. And welcome to the Pulse Show question, Questions and Answers, where we're going to get a chance to talk to the writer of the play, uh, director, and the uh, father-son acting duo. So my name is Kiri Daniel. I'm the creator of a blog and podcast called Woke Mommy Chatter. Um, and I am also a founding steering committee member of a group called Parents of Black Children. So I'm really excited. And first, we have uh, Idris Goodwin with us tonight, who's an award-winning playwright. Um, and a uh, breakbeat uh, poet. Um, and we also have Natasha Mumba, the director of tonight's play. And of course, Kevin and Miles, the stars of the show. So hi everyone, welcome to you all. It's nice to see you and thank you for that. Um, so I think we'll start uh, with, with Idris. Um, you know, I, I, I read the script and then I just watched uh, the performance and it's such a poignant, conversation, particularly now um, with all of the social unrest that's happening. And it's a, it's a conversation that happens in so many black homes, right? Similar to conversations about driving while black. So why was it important for you to tell this story and to write, um, to write this particular story and this conversation in this way? Well, you know, I feel like that's my job. Um, my job as a dramatist is to just write about uh, the questions, right, and relationships, and the choices uh, that we have to make, and and uh, the, the areas that are gray. Um, and as a parent of a of a young boy myself, um, who loves Harry Potter, but also loves you know military stuff and toy soldiers and all that, just like I did and loves water guns and water balloons and all that stuff. And my wife hates all of it. <laughs> and um, I got in a lot of trouble when I introduced him to Star Wars. And uh, suddenly his uh, his little, you know, magnifying glasses got turned into blasters, you know? And, uh, and it's just, you know, I just write from a space of um, the things I see and the things I live through and, and uh, it's just to, it's just one of those questions. So when thinking about the umbrella of, you know, um, the multiple ways that race and, you know, contextualizes so many decisions we make, uh, that was one of the ones that popped into my head when I said I wanted to write a series of, of plays. Have you had this conversation before? Not not exactly like like what's portrayed, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's on, it's on and it's ongoing and it don't stop. You know, this is just like one moment uh, that, and you know, I'll, I'll say, you know, this is not to me like patting myself on the back or anything, but you know, you never know as a writer, you know, and uh, you know, you you write some work and you have your favorite scenes or your favorite this or whatever, and the things that really resonate with people are different than what you thought and. Um, this one, across actually many different cultural backgrounds, um, the, the response I've gotten from parents has been really moving um, just because, you know, there's a, because it also intersects with just the conversation around youth and guns, you know, even beyond just the specifics of 
um, you know, the specifics of the black experience. I mean, you know, you think about, you know, in, in, in the United States, you know, our, our willful uh, relation, you know, legacy of, of school shootings and things like that. Um, you know, it, 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 it speaks to that as well. So, um, Kevin, I, this question, likely everyone <laughs> um, wants an answer to, but what's it like? What was it like for you working with with Miles? Uh, you know, it's it's kind of crazy, right? Um, you know, as an actor, you work with with uh, with children all the time, and you know that's what they say. They say never work with children and actors because no one's paying attention to. Sorry, with that, uh, with children and animals. Because yeah. no one pays attention to anything you're doing. Right? <laughs> Everybody's just looking at the kids. But there's something really special about children working uh, um, on on screen or, or in acting in general, right? Because they just are, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that's when you can have a baby on camera, and everyone will just watch that baby just exist. So um, it, it's great watching my son, uh, seeing him be himself, and and how profound that is. But also seeing him elevate the text to another level and do things with it that I never thought uh, were possible, but he's just working from his own frame of reference. So it was it was a great experience. It's tough not to be a parent and it's tough not to try to like jump over all over the director and say, no, 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 no. That's not, that's just my boy. That's just him being stupid. That's just him, you know what I mean? I'm but, like, no, Kevin, he's making a choice. Yeah, I know, I know. And that's the tough part, right? Is he's actually, he's working. He's, he's doing some work, right? So it was, it was a great learning experience for me. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. You guys were fantastic, by the way. I didn't give enough praise. The performance was really spectacular and well done. And uh, it's so cool to experience these because everyone does something different with it. And um, I've seen a mother and a daughter do it. I've seen, you know, I've seen, um, and this was really great. I also love the the bit of blocking at the top too. I was like, okay, they do. They getting their little Aaron Sork and they getting their little work, 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 you know. What I'm saying, I like that. But it was great. You guys were so grounded and so connected, and you didn't waste any moments. And um, I felt like you really, uh, really honored the work. So it was wonderful. Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, man. It's uh, it's nice to do a piece like this, um, and it's it's kind of perfectly suited to these COVID times that we're in right now, where. Um, you know, the, the regardless of the, the distance that's happening uh, between the two, it's important to reach into uh, and, and, and capture the attention of your children and realize, make them realize the importance of the moment, the importance of what's happening around them without frightening them. And I think that's what's beautiful about this piece as well is that, uh, you know, he's trying his best to, to impart this, this message to his son without stealing his childhood and his innocence from him at the same time. Yeah, you know, that's so. So often, that's what's happening. Right? Yeah. When, you, when, yeah. you see, when you see the the images of unrest on television, when you hear about the fact that, uh, you know, when my son has asked me questions like, "Why did they kill this man, Dad?" You know, that's that's part of his innocence being stolen. Uh, so yeah. I, I love I love yeah. the fact that he's trying to do it with a deft hand and trying yeah. to, to the next level and to help and to to save his life potentially down the line. But do it with uh, with with love and with some understanding of the fact that he's he's seven years old, right? So yeah. it's a beautiful piece that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Natasha, as a, as a director, how did you um, kind of bring that to life? I think that what Kevin said is so true, right? And there's such sim simplicity in the conversation that Idris wrote. How did you kind of take that a complex conversation like that and try and bring it to life um, as you were directing um, Kevin and Miles? Yeah. Um, well, I had the wonderful gift of having the great dynamic of father-son already being a gift to me as a director, which is so nice. Um, we talked a lot about, when we started rehearsal, I, I brought up the word preservation, which really resonated with me in terms of, like Kevin says, the preservation of your child's actual life, giving them the tools that they need to navigate being Black and dark-skinned in this world, in this Western world specifically. Uh, and then the preservation of their innocence. And so Miles, um, sorry, Kevin's character has this complex tension that he has to maintain throughout the piece where it's like, I need to give you what I need to give you in order to prepare you. But at the same time, your innocence, you deserve that as well. And you deserve the joy and the pleasure of that. So I have to make, I am the master of those scales and that responsibility for him to manage um, was the was really was the through line for us throughout the piece. And the and the reason why I love this play so much is because we get the beautiful moment of having the water gun song 
where the father takes that innocence as well and allows it to be enough in that moment. Um, just to talk about the deafness of his parenting, he, but he also sort of allows himself to sit in a space where he knows he can't stay there. But it is such a wonderful gift that he's given him that is not pragmatic, but it is it reflects the innocence and the simplicity of his mind, which he has the right to own and to have at that age. So yeah, that's sort of how we played around through that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so I would say to the audience, um, if you have questions, please write them in the chat and we'll do our best to, to get to them and to answer them. Um, Kevin, is, is this, um, I asked Idris, you know, where the idea came from, but have you had this conversation with Miles? Have you had to sit him down and talk about water guns? I know I have with my kids and I mean, it's like word for word, the, the, the you know, trying to explain to them the fact that yes, it's just a toy, but it means something else to, to us as adults. Um, and the confusion that some people might have um, with a toy gun in, in black hands, right? So have you had that conversation with Miles and how what, what how did that go and what was that like? Um, yeah, I think Miles, Miles was having some connection issues here and I think he's trying to get in on the on the chat at some point. Uh, so we'll see if we can get him, get him in here. Oh, uh, there, there, he is. there he is. Hi Miles. Hi Miles. <laughs> there we go. Um, we were just talking about chat smiles with uh, uh, about stuff like this, and um, no, I heard you. Oh, you did hear? Okay, great. Um, well, you know what? Uh, we we have had talks about guns in general, water guns specifically. No, um, because I'm not I'm not quite at the level that that uh, Adrian's wife is at as far as water guns are concerned. Um, because for me, for me, that's okay. That's different. Water guns are are big and chunky and and whatever, but there's a bunch of other like Nerf guns they have, which is what they really love. That's the one that my, my kids are into. And we talk about those, but mostly about eye protection and stuff like that. The thing that I have a problem with and the thing that I've talked to my sons about specifically uh, are like laser pointers and, mm. guns, and guns that look a little bit more real. Those are the ones that have, have, have unfortunately been been the biggest issue. And that's, you know, we have, don't have to go any further than Tamir Rice and those who choose to, to, to find out what, what, what that means. So I have personally, have that problem. If my kids are pointing, like they're playing with the cat and then they point the laser pointer at me, I freak out. Like I truly have a visceral reaction to that. I don't like seeing that red dot anywhere on me or anywhere on the wall. So my kids know that. And they've taken it to, a cause I got two older sons than Miles as well. So they, sometimes they do it to annoy me because they know that it sets me off, but they know that they know the, the genesis of it. They know the reason of it. But we have also had very, very uh, deep discussions, especially in recent months, uh, at the dinner table about the issues of the day, about the you know the killing of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, I don't want to steal Miles Thunder too much if, if if he wants to talk about it a little bit. But um, these these are not these are not foreign foreign topics of discussion for us by any stretch. Yeah. Miles, what was it like working with your dad? It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> You don't have to lie, Miles. You know? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> would you want to do it again? Is it something you would want to do again? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really no, sweet. No offense, Dad, but I'm a little bit. He's a lot better. He's a little bit. <laughs> okay, Miles. He's a competition. Listen. <laughs> oh, dad, yeah. Yeah, he's a lot better than me, man. Definitely. You did a great job. You did a great yeah. job, boy. So did you. Thanks. <laughs> Idris, I wanted to ask you, so in the play, um, there's a question that really struck me. And that question was, um, how, how are Cindy's parents towards you? And I think that, you know, as a parent myself, it's one of those questions that's really, it's a really loaded, <laughs> complicated, deep question, right? So there's so many there's so many, um, there's so much that you're saying in that one question um, and not saying at the same time. So can you speak a little bit about that? Why you kind of wrote that in there? Why you started the conversation with that particular question? Uh, because, I mean, you know, you all know what it is. You know what I mean? It's, it's, um, it's, it's I, I mean, there's a simple answer, but I think that it might be more interesting to get into the bit of the more, um, you know, the, the more, I don't know, the more complicated answer, which is like, we're not um, comfortable 
we don't have that privilege of total comfort. You know, it can, it can like that, like everything is loaded. Every question means something. Every comment means something else. And it can happen just like that. Oh, we really got a cat. Oh, that's cool. What's the cat's name? Cat's name is Obama. Oh, okay. So even then, even then you're like, where is that going to go? Right. And then it's like, oh, it's because of the, the fur where you're like, that's not like yeah. mm-hmm. in level racism, but it's like it's on the it's on the chart. And then in that moment, you're you start asking all these questions, which a child may not even begin to understand. Um, so again, you know, these are the these are the these are the 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 tiny you know the small but not small things about you know particularly living in the world, particularly in America. Um, you know, as a, as a person of color and just the stuff we have to navigate, you know, like minuscule, small, medium, large, extra large, extra, extra large, you know, it's just like, it doesn't stop. And that level of constant, that, that, that reminder that you can never get too comfortable is why we have a problem with the all lives matter response. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and then tell someone, and they'll never get it. They'll never get it. They'll never get it. Because this is just because that's when it happened. Right. It's like, yes, the George Floyds and all that. Those are the those are the extra large. But it's the day to day stuff that builds yeah. up the small things, the microaggressions, the little stuff you have to just navigate. It's um, and because, you know, I'm a dramatist, it's like it's also kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's tragic, right? It's tragic, but it's also like kind of funny. So in that moment, it's kind of funny when you see him turn and be like, hmm. what's up with these parents, right? Because you're always also kind of suspicious too. You don't know what they say to your kid when you drop your kid off. Right. You know, you don't know, you don't know, you know, so that that's it's, what that moment is. That's the it's longest. survival, right? It's, it's, um, it's survival and it's protection yeah. for your children as well. Um, I, I, I'm just jumping jump in real quick. I just really <laughs> love in a short play like this, right? Every word counts. Yeah. We had a great time talking about the fact that the girl's name is Cindy. Yeah. We, we had the whole story in the <laughs> Once the girl's name is Cindy, you know what that girl looks like. And yeah. I feel bad afterwards because I remember there's a sister I worked with a long time ago. Her name is Cindy. So God bless her. But <laughs> Cindy is a very specific name, right? And and you and you see it. You see what happens when he's playing at Cindy's house. And he has a, he has an affection for Cindy, but Cindy's from a different uh different different neck of the woods. So uh, I love that. I really, really love the specificity in the voice in, in that. And it's sort of to jump off of that, Idris, it's like what the difference between reading a play written by a black playwright for black people, um, the, all those nuances that happen, it's it's easier for you to place them and it's easier for us to find them. Yeah. And there is there, there's this, um, uh, because when I heard that line, I was like, oh yeah, okay. There's this uh, ease with that. That is, that is so great because it's so hard to find spaces for us. Um, and yeah. we have to work so hard to, the, to get to those spaces. So it's such a treat and hopefully it doesn't have to always be a treat to get to mm. work by uh, playwrights of color. And so mm. anyway, there was just so much pleasure and joy in knowing that you knew, you know this world and we know this world and we're collaborating and sharing it and creating something for people. So, so that was mm. a real joy. Thank so you. we have a couple that. minutes remaining. So we're gonna do one question from the audience and we have Joseph McPhee who's asking, is it harder to produce or perform in a show when you can't uh, see your audience? So question. I guess we'll throw that to Kevin and Miles. Yeah. What was it like performing when you can't see, you don't have the reaction? Uh, yeah, it's, 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 how did you feel about it, Miles? They've heard a lot, me talk a lot about it. You go ahead, buddy. It's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> like it feels weird because you don't know like what, like the expression is mad, sad, happy, excited. From yourself or from the audience, if they're enjoying it or from what? From, from the audience, got you. And that's and that's true. I mean, the reason why I love theater, I love that communion between the actor and the and the audience, right? And it's 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 a dance. It's a dance that you're doing. So it's it's a different way of working, right? You're sort of working like you're working in television and film, but not quite. So. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's an adjustment, and the muscularity of it is different. So, uh, you know, this is a new world we're working in right now. So we're we're figuring it out bit by bit, but uh, it's definitely it's definitely different. And uh, and your scene partner being through a screen is difficult as well. But um, 
you know, fortunately, I think we have a little bit of a connection, so we're able to uh, to broach that distance a little bit. It was good. Yeah, you guys made it work. It it um, we didn't notice that at all. That was great. Yeah, um, we, we had we definitely had some tech problems here as well today too. <laughs> the connections were acting up on us. So I'm proud of I'm proud of Miles for sticking through it. You yeah. did a great job with that, man. You know, now the internet is perfect, of course, right? <laughs> we we're having some problems there. So for your first gig, that was that was pretty good. I'm proud of you, man. So I'm gonna see if we can maybe just sneak one more question. And this is from Vanessa Sears. Um, Natasha, how was it to direct with without being able to be in the same space as your actors? So similar question, but yeah. a little bit different. Um, how was it? You know, these days uh, I'm thirsty for any theater connection and creative connection, <laughs> so I'll take what I can get. Um, how was it? I mean, of course it's different. Like I don't have your bodies in the space. It was a privilege, like you said, Kevin, it, you guys know each other well. So there's a dynamic already established there, which is great. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, in terms of, I'm sure it would be, a, it's completely different to do it in person. And there is something, the, the platform, I mean, what, what you're trying to do, Idris, with these digital plays is that I, we have to accept the format that we're in because we have this incredible opportunity now to be in people's living rooms. I mean, my mom is watching all the way from Zambia right now. <laughs> and so there's just, there, you know, there are pros and cons of this. Um, and I mean, we did the best that we can and we adjusted accordingly, but uh, I feel like there's 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 a great reward at the end of even navigating the complexities of technology. So, yeah. The best thing from Natasha was that uh, when I, when she didn't want to listen to me anymore, she just took off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> the last listen, I don't have time Vanessa, for this, Kevin. <laughs> Vanessa, how are you, sister? It's good to see you again. But uh, yeah, that was it. Natasha just took off her screen and say, "Enough for you, man." And I'm was, done. We just closed the laptop, yeah. and I'll come back when I'm ready. In the in the rehearsal hall, I would follow her out the door. <laughs> alone, Kevin. I'm done. I'm There's done. Pluses and minuses to everything. <laughs> yeah, navigating relationships. Thank you all. I think we're just about at time, but this was fantastic. Thank you all, um, Idris, Natasha, Kevin, Miles. It was so nice to to chat with you all, and um, thank you to the audience as well who's joined at home. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, everybody, Bye. thank you so much for this opportunity. Bye.